These instructions are for the least common multiple and greatest common factor program. Let's review while loops. The coin flip simulation program introduced you to the while loop. We also did a little bit with our small picture and loops program. You can control a while loop in two different ways so far. One way, the one way that we've used it so far is with the counter, incrementing the counter inside the loop. So think back to our small picture and, pro, and, small picture and loops program. We used the counter to count up to that many times. And also with the coin flip simulation, we used we had three different counters, and we could use all three of them in their own while loops to stop the loop at whatever particular condition we wanted. You can also ask the use, you can also stop a while loop by asking the user for a new value for the control variable. We haven't done this yet, but you can. A little example is below on this slide in red. So think about if I wanted to ask, like, let's, let's say I'm at the store and I want to add up all the different items that I bought. I'm going to stop until I don't have any more items to include. So I have like a number input, input a number, uh, like it could be the price of, a, of an item. And while that number is not negative one, I'm going to do whatever I need to do inside the loop. And I would type in neg negative one or some value that you would select, some kind of flag or sentinel, to quit the loop. So it's kind of similar to a counter and that you can control when to stop the loop, but this time would be through input. We're not going to do that now, but we will do that in an upcoming lesson. But you can also control a while loop with math. This is where a loop will continue until a math expression evaluates to true. So I'm going to do some kind of math expression, and I can compare it to a number. I can compare it to a different math expression. Um, but it's going to do the math, compare it, and evaluate to true or false. You'll still need to change a control variable inside the loop to avoid an infinite loop. An example of this type of loop control is finding the least common multiple of two numbers. So consider the algorithm for this problem. If you were in, just like math class, if you're teaching your younger brother or sister how to find the least common multiple, how would you do that? Let's just take two numbers. Let's just say um, we're going to take the number four and the number six. Now, to find the least common multiple, I might list the multiples of four. So after four, I'm going to have eight. I'm going to have 12. I'm going to have 16, 20. 24, and so forth. And then I could list all the multiples of 6. So I have 6, 12, 18, 24, and so forth. And then, so I have my list of multiples, and I would look for ones that they have in common. And so I've got 12 in common. I've got 24 in common. But since I'm looking for the least common multiple, my answer would be 12. Now that's great if I have two lists and I can just kind of eyeball it, but a computer's not going to work that way. So is there a way that I could do this problem with just um, one list? So let's say that I'm going to list all the multiples of four, and then as I go, I'm going to check to see if it's also a multiple of six without having to list the multiples of six. So I've got four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. I already know that all of these are multiples of 4 because I'm just adding 4 each time. So that's already given. I don't have to test to see if these numbers are multiples of 4, but I can take each one and see if it's a multiple of 6. And I would start with 4. Is 4 a multiple of 6? Well, you can probably tell me no, but mathematically, how could you tell me no? I mean, what is a multiple? Um, so how we would do it is starting to list the multiples and check to see if it, if it's a factor. Um, how do you determine if a number is a factor? Remember modulo division. We haven't done it for a while, but it's so useful. We can use it for so many things. If I'm looking to see if something is a multiple, if some number is a multiple of, a, of another number, then that other number is a factor of the multiple. And so if I'm dividing the multiple by the factor, I should get a remainder of zero. If so, it is a multiple, because I have no remainder. So think about the steps required to find the least common multiple. Uh, so if we're coming back to our Jamboard, if I start with four, 
and we can do long division here. So I've got 4. I'm going to divide it by 6. 6 goes into 4 0 times. I put um, a 0 right here, and I have a remainder of 4. So I have 4, which is my multiple that I'm checking, modulo 6, which is I'm seeing if it's a factor. Here I would get 4. Well, I could try the next one, 8. So I've got 8. Divided by 6, 6 goes into 8 one time, I get a 6 down here, and my remainder is 2. So 8, which is my multiple, modulo 6, which is my factor, it gives me 2. Let's try the next number, 12. I'll come up here, 12 divided by 6, 6 goes into 12 two times, and my remainder is 0. So 12 which is my multiple, modulo 6, which is my factor, equals 0. I know that when I get that 0 as my remainder, then 6 is a factor of 12, which also tells me that 12 is a multiple of 6. So using this modulo division and just looking at the multiples of one of my numbers, I can determine the least common multiple. So the first time it happens, I've got my least common multiple. So you're going to create a program that's going to give the output of the first number, the second number, and what is the least common multiple. You think about the steps for that, and how did I just do it? I, I asked for two numbers, and in this case, it was a 4 and a 6. And I took one of those two numbers, and I made it into the multiple. So I started with 4. And then I started listing the multiples of 4. Well, I just took one at a time. I took the first multiple, and I checked to see if it was if the other number was a factor. And if not, I got the next multiple, so I just added. Then I checked again. So if, if I'm just going to add and check, check and add, check and add, check and add, check and add, I've got myself a loop. So that's what you're going to do for this first part of the program. And I've got a few more hints about that in here. Um, as you go through, you're, uh, there's no template for this, so you're going to start from a fresh Python template and change the button. I've got kind of the steps to remind you about taking that ordinary template and making it into your own program. And then when you get to this slide, it's going to remind you how to do the actual function, making your line variables global, um, getting your first two numbers, assigning a value to the LCM, which is going to be the first number, or you could use the second number, it doesn't really matter. Start the loop, what you're going to do inside the loop, what you're going to do outside the loop. And so all the information is there, and th the steps are fairly straightforward. There's nothing really new about this other than working through the condition. One thing I want to remind you about when it comes to writing your condition is think about when you want the, the loop to end, and you're going to do the opposite. So if I want it to end when the remainder is zero, the condition is going to be while it's not zero, I keep going until I find that LCM. So you might notice here my example of the Boolean expression is while the remainder modulo division is not equal to zero, the loop is going to keep going. So when it does equal zero, that's when it's going to stop. If you did it the reverse, you would get the opposite. So when you're thinking about the conditions for your while loop, think what you want it to do to end it but your condition will be the opposite. So if I want to end when it equals zero, my loop goes and while it's not equal to zero. So I'm going to expect for you to do this part on your own. And then you're going to get um, an iteration number two. Instead of asking the user for some numbers, do a second button where you'll get random numbers. It'll be easier to test that way. And I even have a challenge for you about using isValid and a display helper function.